hello students so in this video i will be discussing about the chapter of expansion of solid so previously you know uh, we can extend or deform the shape of any solid by applying some force right but we can also change the size of the shape of any material whether it is solid or uh, liquid or gases by just only imparting some thermal energy that means if you increase or decrease the temperature of any substance whether it is solids liquid or gases it will uh, goes on changing of its uh, volume its shape its geometry basically so in this chapter uh, we will try to visualize how um, with increase or decrease in temperature different solids changes their shape and we will develop a theory about this we will uh, learn the concept uh, how to solve the problem uh, regarding when you impart some thermal energy on the system how it uh, changes its length its uh, area or its uh, volume so for our example or for illustration let us take a solid so as you know every substance or solid it is made up of atom or it consists of atom right so for our understanding let us take a crystalline solid i will elaborate what is a crystalline solid so crystalline solids are those kind of solid which have uh, which are regular periodic arrangement of atoms that means the atoms are perfectly arranged arranged in periodical manner that means so when you build your house right so you have to arrange your bricks in a perfectly order so that you can get the perfect shape so crystalline solids are those where the atoms are arranged in a manner periodically that means the atom will not arrange in a, any random position they will sit on at some particular position so uh, this uh, this uh, fields correspond to a large fields called the crystallography however i am not going to those part so let us uh, think that this is a crystalline solid where these are atoms so these are arranged like this way okay so i am here considering some uh, six atoms practically there are plenty of thousand of millions of atoms in a solid right so these springs represents the force between the atom so i am taking a model if i increase the distance between these two atom then this expansion there will be expansion in the spring right so i we can easily map this expansion between the distance of the atoms by a spring uh, constant right so as you know uh, spring constant has a relation with force like this way so k is the spring constant so if you impart some force on the on the spring then it will be elongated by a distance x so if you have a spring if you, you have applied a force then you will spring will be expanded so it is the elongation x is the elongation so similarly if you impart thermal energy in a solid the atoms will vibrate around the mean equilibrium position so by mean equilibrium position i mean if a atom is here and another atom is here now if you impart some thermal energy right then this atom can move to this position or can move to this position similarly this atom will can move to this position and also this position so this is your mean position so taking this position as mean this atom will move like this way and also that way now if you increase the thermal energy that means if you increase the temperature of the solids at a certain amount then this vibration of the atom about this mean equilibrium position will also increase that means the separation between two atoms will increase effectively than the previous case so that means uh, when you apply some thermal energy in a solid the atomic vibration increases and as a result of this atomic vibration of large amplitudes the distance between any two corresponding atoms will also increase so and this effect will uh, change the shape of the solid so it will go on expanding the volume expanding its length and expanding its area so all three dimensions will be expanded similarly if you decrease the temperature of the solid then this atomic oscillation or atomic vibration will also decrease and resulting in the decrease of the bond length between the two atoms then the atoms also can decrease its shape size and volume as well so as you can see increasing temperature has a large impact on the shape and the size of a 
crystalline solid or amor pass solid you can also say so for example i have taken a crystalline picture of the solid amor pass means that, that atoms atoms are randomly oriented there also you can have the same effect now how to visualize uh, this change in the solid practically so for the case of solid this expansion is a uh, very much less so to detect with the bare eyes that is a difficult thing but however there are some cases like uh, whenever you uh, look on railway tracks you can see that uh, there are gaps between the railway tracks so it is because so in the summer time there is be rise in temperature so the material of the tracks will uh, uh, will undergo a change in the shape so if you don't have that gap then uh, it will create a tension the railway tracks will be bend in any direction right so uh, it is a practical aspect uh, taking about the expansion of solid so that you can take care of the railway tracks so that uh, it can uh, perform all throughout the year at a particular uh, temperature range so it will have no deformation practically and another example uh, if you have a two material say if you have a uh, uh, have some material which which have which are the metal a and uh, some metal b and you heat uh, he heat this uh, material then you can see this uh, material will bend its shape so now the question comes why this material bend the shape like this so i can explain in the concept that so every material does not have the same linear expansion coefficient by which i want to say that the every material will not expand if you apply them same amount of uh, thermal energy the expansion will not be same so as in this case this red metal the expansion of red metal is less compared to the blue metal so that means the blue metal responds more rapidly than the red metal that is why this blue metal has been expanded more than the red metal so there will be tension and this system will be bent like this so these are some practical example you can easily perform so now uh, let's go to the theory how to calculate the linear co expansion coefficient of a solid that i will going to risk now uh, let us find out an way of how to calculate linear expansion coefficient of a 1d rod 1d rod means i am taking only one dimension so i am taking only its length okay so the scenario is like this let's say if you have that rod of l1 length at a particular temperature t1 right then you gradually increase its temperature to t2 and your final length is this l2 so you can see this red dotted line denotes the expansion of this rod than the previous length of l2 so you know as you increase the thermal energy or as you increase the temperature of the system it will elongate right so now the change in the length i am denoting it as delta l so delta l will be your l2 minus of l1 okay so i am here considering l2 greater than l1 as t2 greater than t1 you can also calculate conversely let's say you can also start from a higher temperature and you go to a lower temperature then then the length of the rod will decrease so in general you can uh, uh, denote del l as l2 difference l1 you can also denote however i am taking this case as i am incorporating the expansion of the rod only okay so this is your change in the length now uh, as you can see this change in the length will be proportional to change in the temperature delta t so delta t is your t2 minus t1 here i have considered t2 greater than t1 so that means if the change in temperature is more then the change in the length of the rod will be more that means if you impart more and more thermal energy the length of the rod will expand more and more so that is why this change is proportional to change in temperature so this is experimental fact, fact you can easily check secondly this change in the length l2 minus l1 is also proportional to initial length l1 so that means if your initial length is higher then the change of the length of the rod will also be higher now from the concept uh, in the class 
you have learned about uh, how to how to incorporate if the if a quantity changes accordingly with respect to two variable here del t and l1 then this combined change will result l2 minus l1 proportional to l1 into del t okay now if you want to write equality here then l2 minus l1 equal to some alpha times l1 into del t so this alpha is here a proportionality constant obviously it is not zero and it is greater than zero now you can uh, rewrite this equation as so alpha your linear expansion coefficient as change in length divided by the initial length into change in temperature so you can substitute all the terms here then it will be looking like this so this uh, linear expansion coefficient you can give a definition from this mathematical equation right so let's say if your l1 is one unit okay let me uh, remove the other parts and your increase in temperature is one unit so if you substitute this this values in equation one then you will definitely find alpha equal to l2 minus l1 now you can construct your definition of alpha how so alpha will be defined as the change in the length of a of a rod or of a solid per unit length per unit increase in temperature or decrease in temperature so this uh, temperature can be increased or decreased so alpha will be greater than or less than one so this way you can uh, define alpha easily so no need to uh, memorize uh, all the definition of some constant if you have the mathematical equation then you can easily construct your own uh, own version of the definition of some physical quantity okay now if you rewrite this equation then uh, it will be alpha times l1 into t2 minus t1 equal to l2 minus of l1 now you can write l2 equal to so i am taking this whole term in the left hand side then you can like write like this t2 minus t1 then you can write l2 equal to n1 plus of alpha into t1 sorry this will be l1 into t2 minus t1 now this l1 is a common term then you can write like this l1 into 1 plus alpha t2 minus of t1 okay so this is a equation you should remember for calculating the change in the length of some uh, of some substance by uh, substituting all the values in this equation so if you know your l1 at particular temperature t1 if you know alpha of that material if you know the final temperature then you can easily calculate the final uh, final length of the solid uh, with this equation so try to memorize these things you can also derive by uh, just calculating two or three lines here okay now you can also take a modified from this equation like uh, let's say if your initial temperature that is t1 is 0 degree celsius and you denote l1 as l0 so l0 corresponds to length at 0 degree celsius right now if you increase the temperature from 0 to t let's say 0 to t degree celsius and your final length is lt then you can rewrite this equation as in the place of l2 you write lt in place of l1 you write l0 and what else and you can write 1 plus alpha instead of t2 minus t1 you can write t minus 0 that means just 1 plus alpha t so this is a equation if you are increasing the temperature from the 0 degree celsius okay you so you remember all these equation to solve the mathematical problems now i will discuss what is the unit of this linear expansion coefficient alpha and how to calculate from this equation so now i have a previous equation alpha defined as like this then how to calculate the unit of alpha so unit of alpha will solely depend on the temperature that is 1 minus t1 minus t2 because this change in length and length have the same dimension l and l so this will cancel out so you have only 
dimensions for temperature. So, unit of alpha will be 1 by unit of temperature, right? And you know temperature has a unit degree Celsius or Kelvin, then your unit becomes 1 by degree Celsius or degree Celsius inverse or 1 by Kelvin equal to Kelvin inverse. Generally in SI system we'll, we will uh, we discuss about the Kelvin and we take degree Celsius in the CGS system. Okay. So unit of alpha only depends on the temperature not on the length of the system. Now if you understand this linear expansion coefficient but then you can easily understand how the uh, expansion coefficient for the area so expansion coefficient of area will look like expansion coefficient of area or you can say areal expansion coefficient you can also give the name so it is generally denoted by beta different books uh, may have uh, used some different notation so i am preferring beta here okay so the scenario is like this let's say if you have some uh, substance uh, which have area s1 at temperature t1 and you increase the temperature then this area will goes on increasing because the bond between the atoms will increase so it will expand in two dimension that is in x direction and y direction or you can say this is also x direction you can take any axis as x or y so this is your final s2 so as you can see this area have increased with the increase in temperature so the change in area will be s2 minus s1 so similarly like the previous case you can easily understand that this change in area will be proportional to what right change in temperature t2 minus t1 and also s2 minus s1 proportional to initial area then you can combine these things and you will get the form s2 minus s1 proportional to s1 into t2 minus t1 right now if you want to introduce equality in the equation then you can write s2 minus s1 equal to some proportionality constant beta times s1 into t2 minus t1 so this is this beta is your expansion coefficient for area so you have the equation s2 minus s1 beta into s1 into t2 minus of t1 now you can rewrite this equation as beta equal to s2 minus s1 divided by your s1 into t2 minus t1 so like in the previous case if you want to formulate a definition for beta then you take s1 as one unit change in temperature as one unit then you can say beta is equal to change in the area so that means your beta the expansion coefficient of area will be defined as the change in the area per unit area per unit change in temperature so that's the way you can give a definition in some physical quantity so this is the all about change in expansion coefficient of area and similarly if you understand deeply then you can you can uh, easily tell me that what will be the unit for beta so beta beta unit of beta will be depend slowly solely upon the so it will solely depend on temperature right how you can uh, look at this equation so if you do a dimension analysis so beta so the area dimension is l square divided by l square and some temperature okay so temperature i am uh, denoting as uh, let's say a small t okay so this l square instance cancel out so 1 by t so dimension depends on only the temperature as well the unit will also depend on the inverse of the temperature so beta will also have the same unit degree celsius inverse or kelvin inverse in general we take kelvin inverse in our si system then you can rewrite your previous equation just in the case of linear expansion coefficient so here you can write your final area s2 equal to initial area times 1 plus beta into t2 minus t1 i am not showing all the steps here uh, because uh, it is easily derivable as you have seen in the case of linear expansion coefficient and in the similarly if t1 is 0 degree celsius t2 is some t degree celsius then you can write s2 equal to a sub 0 1 plus beta into t okay you just substitute t1 
to 0 t2 to t and s1 as s0 and s2 as st so this equation gives you change in the area from the from the area at 0 degree celsius so if you are doing a math where the area of the substance is given as 0 degree celsius and i have increased the temperature of the substance let's say some t degree celsius then you can take this equation even you can calculate the final area and as well the change in the uh, area of the material as well now in similar ways you can also define the volume expansion coefficient uh, which has a name gamma so these are, are all greek words so these are gamma okay so the scenario is like this a uh, substance has a volume v1 a uh, temperature t1 you can uh, draw any arbitrary volume i have uh, drawn some cube like structure okay and at final temperature t2 the volume is expanded to v2 so i am here only considering the temperature increase part okay your final volume v2 equal to v1 times 1 plus gamma into t2 minus of t1 right so you understand so as you can see if you know your gamma the volume expansion coefficient of some substance and you, you know the change in temperature you can calculate the final volume okay so similarly you can also write gamma as v2 minus v1 divided by v1 into t2 minus t1 so you can see this volume and volume dimension are same so gamma will only depend on the temperature so its dimension only depends on the temperature so unit as well so volume expansion coefficient will also have the same unit as alpha beta so it will have unit degree celsius inverse and right kelvin inverse okay so this is all about your volume expansion coefficient so if you are considering only the change in the length then you will take the equation for linear expansion coefficient if you want to incorporate the change in the area of some substance then you can take the area expansion coefficient and if you want to study the volume change in volume with change in temperature then you can take this volume expansion coefficient and this all three coefficient have a so relation like alpha equal to so your uh, beta will be 2 alpha okay and your gamma will be 3 alpha so it has some relation with the linear expansion coefficient that means if you know linear expansion coefficient alpha you multiply by 2 then you will get your area expansion coefficient and if you know your linear expansion alpha you can also calculate gamma by multiplying it 3 now these are uh, relations are easily der derivable i am not going to the uh, derivation of this uh, relation it will elongate the video you can uh, you can refer any textbook now it is a uh, now relation uh, in hs or board exam or cbsc exam they are not giving me the derivation they are more focusing on the problem with respect to this chapter okay so you can remember this rel relation for uh, solving your problems so this is regarding the first part of this expansion of solid so i will be back very soon with the with the second part uh, where i will uh, show you some important problems regarding this chapter so this will help you uh, in understanding this chapter in more deeply so either don't you uh, you don't uh, solve those problems you will not fully understand this whole chapter so understanding the theory as well as understanding or doing the problem that will enhance your theory so i will be uh, back very soon so stay tuned for that and if you like this video then hit like and please subscribe my channel if you want to see more content like this in future and let me know what do you feel about this video if, if you have any confusion let me know in the comment section i will be happy to reply all those queries so bye bye thank you i will be back soon till then stay safe in this uh, lockdown time so take care bye